Hey everyone, I'm out here in the garage and I've got my gas trimmer here. So just like my lawnmower, the gas trimmer has been sitting in my shed for a pretty long time. So I'm going to see if I can get this up and running again. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, I just want to welcome you here and hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you like what you see. Also, check out DIY Apprentice on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post lots of pictures on those platforms before I post anything on YouTube. And occasionally I'll post things on those platforms I don't post on YouTube. Also, check out the website at DIYApprentice.com. So this is my Poland PPB100 gas trimmer. And yes, that is how you pronounce it. It is Poland. I saw a TV commercial from back in the 70s where they talked about how to properly pronounce the name, it is Poland, just like the country, but without the D. So this trimmer has been sitting in my shed for probably, I want to say around 10 years, not running. I think I bought it about 15 years ago. And I usually use my, my electric trimmer because it's just much easier to pull out instead of trying to fuss with this thing and trying to get it started. But I like using gas equipment or equipment that doesn't have cords. And so I like to get this running again. So the thing I like about this tool, as you can see, it's got the ability to add different attachments on the end. And I've really never taken advantage of that feature. I've only used the trimmer uh, attachment, and that's it. So just like with the mower video that I did on the Toro 20333, I'm going to walk through some simple steps on this tool. So let's get into it. Prior to the making of this video, I did some work on the trimmer that I'll get into as we go along. As you can see, the trimmer runs for a while, then stops. It wouldn't even attempt to start before, so we made some significant progress. Since this is a combustion engine, the principles of spark, air, and fuel apply. So we'll start with spark first. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove the spark plug. And I want to check the connector here to make sure that it is not dirty, it doesn't have any corrosion on it. So we'll pull that off first. And I don't know if you can see that, but it looks fairly clean inside there. No corrosion that I can see. I'm going to go ahead and pull the spark plug off next. The recommended spark plug for this trimmer is Champion RCJ-6Y. And it should be removed and tightened with a 3 quarter inch or 19 millimeter socket. And there is our spark plug. Hopefully you can see the tip there. It looks fairly flat. I think this is a newer spark plug. I may have, I think I've tried to get this started several times. So the spark plug is most likely fine. All right, so I've got a spark plug gap opener tool here. And what I'm gonna do is check the space between the electrode and the tip. And it should be 0.025 inches. So let's go ahead and put this in there like that. It's already pretty tight. Slide that around and it's about, yep, 0 0.025 inches. So that's perfect. So I'm just going to put this back in and then we'll move on. Now this is another tool you can use for diagnosing some issues with these small engines and this is a spark tester. So this one happens to be by Lyle. I'll put the part number somewhere on the screen here. And so there's two ends of this tool. So you got that right there, and I'll show you how this is hooked up. It's got a little uh, bulb in the middle. That bulb lights up when the engine's running. In our case, this, this tool is probably not going to provide much information because it is running for a while. It's not really running rough. It just runs for a while, and then it stops running. So how this is hooked up, we've got this cable that comes with it. It's got two ends on it. So you can test different types of engines and different types of locations of spark plugs. So this one's more for, like for example, a V8 engine on a truck. This end is more for something probably like this. I also noticed that this tool does not work very well with coil on plugs, spark plugs. 
So for example, like if you have a car with a fuel injected uh, engine that has a coil on plug, like my Acura RL, this doesn't work very well because it's not deep enough. This part is not deep enough here. So I'm just going to hook this up real quick, just kind of show you how it looks. So you put this end on the spark plug, snap it on. Uh, this end here goes on right there, and then you've got your other connector down here. It slides on like that. So what will happen is if this bulb doesn't light up, that's telling you you don't have spark, or if you see that it's kind of you know, flickering, if it's not really consistent, then that tells you you have inconsistent spark. All right, so let's check for air next, and that means basically taking the cover off here where the air filter lives. So you press over here on the side. I'll show you what it looks like in a second there. There's a tab right there that goes inside of here. So you release the cover, and inside the cover we've got our air filter. Now this one is pretty dirty. It probably should be replaced. I think it's original uh, to the trimmer, but I also could clean it up with some hot soapy water too. So I may give that a try. I haven't been able to find one of these locally, so uh, I may end up trying to uh, clean this up, but also I'll look around maybe on Amazon or something and see if I can find one. And right back here you'll see that's the inlet for our air. So I'll just flip the valve down, take a look. It looks fairly unobstructed. There's nothing in there that I can see. So that's the carburetor that we're looking at right there. So in terms of air, I'm not really concerned about air being our issue here. So I think I'm just going to move on past that now. Like I said, I will clean this filter up, but I'm going to jump next to fuel. All right, so let's talk about fuel. So as most people know, these gas trimmers take a mixture of 40 to 1 ratio gas to oil. So it is a special oil, of course, that you put in here for these two cycle engines. So the tank actually has fresh gas and oil in it, so I'm not worried about that. So what we're going to do next is take the back cover off, and I'm going to check out the fuel lines, and I'll show you what I've done in there regarding the fuel lines. To access the fuel lines, we'll need to remove the two Allen head screws holding the cover using a 5 16 Allen wrench. When I started tinkering with this trimmer that had been in my shed for years, it was apparent it really needed an overhaul. The fuel lines were replaced because they were brittle and corroded. I also replaced a fuel filter inside the tank that's attached to the blue line. Check out the description below for any part numbers and sizes. A couple notes here. To replace the fuel lines, I used these cutters that I also use on PEX piping and engine vacuum lines. One thing I noticed when I pulled the fuel line out of the packaging is that the end of it was cut at an angle. This would seem to make it easier to pass the fuel line through the bottom of the tank and maintain a snug fit. The last component to check was the carburetor and I'd already pulled it once and cleaned it. So when I got a great deal on a brand new carburetor I decided to go ahead with the replacement. I could later rebuild the old carburetor and keep it around as a backup. It really wasn't that far off from working, but I didn't want to hassle with it anymore. Before replacing the carburetor, I wanted to drain the tank to prevent a spill. So I removed the two 5 16 Allen screws, securing the tank to the trimmer. Here is the new carburetor Walbro WT628-1. 
The original is WT628, but I believe WT619 will also work. Here I'm removing the two lines from the carburetor, then transferring them onto the new carburetor. I noticed that one of the new carburetor's inlets was a hair more narrow than on the old carburetor, so I replaced the fuel line with one that provided a tighter fit. Alright, so we're now ready to reinstall everything. I'll first install the two screws holding the tank onto the trimmer using a 5 16 Allen wrench. Next, I hook the cable to the carburetor. And you'll want to be sure the cable goes over the two plastic pieces below the tank when you're ready to close everything up. The gasket that goes between the carburetor and the housing just below the gas tank needs to be replaced. A local small engine shop provided me with a gasket that did not have holes for the positioning studs. So I slid the two screws through the back cover and the carburetor, then I hung the gasket off the two screws. Making sure the fuel lines didn't get pinched, I tighten up the two screws with a 5 16 Allen wrench. The last thing to do here is just to reinstall the rear cover. One other component that can cause poor performance is a clogged muffler screen. It's a bit more work to get to the muffler, and the muffler on this trimmer was just fine, but I may cover it in a separate video. Alright, so there you have it. The trimmer is working again. So you probably noticed partway through the video, I realized that I may not have had enough gas in the tank. <laughs> so that's probably why it was not running like it should. So the carburetor cleaning that I did early on probably did actually resolve the issue. But you got a little bit of a bonus. You got to see me replace the carburetor. And hopefully this information was helpful. And thanks for watching. See links in the description below. Comment, like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on social media. And thanks for watching.